In this episode, I go over my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day, September 15th, 2021. What is going on guys? Justin here, aka No Good Comics, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm talking about my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day, September 15th, 2021. I can't believe we're uh, getting into that part of the year now. Football's begun. Uh, the fall is here. They already have uh, the, you know, pumpkin spice coffee for, uh, you know, Halloween coming up, all this crazy stuff as we reach the fall. So um, I do really enjoy this time of year, so I'm looking forward to it and I uh, hope you all are as well. Uh, if you take, if you can take a moment, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I do appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, just a reminder, these are the books that I am looking forward to coming out next week for New Comic Book Day. Uh, no, no, I mean, I'm going to put them in an order, but no, nothing specific in terms of, um, you know, uh, speculation or anything like that. This is all about books I'm excited for, books I'm looking forward to either continuing to read or reading for the first time if it's a new issue uh, or a new series that's coming out. Uh, so just bear that in mind. These are just books that I'm really looking forward to. If there are books that are not on this list that you think I should be checking out, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always interested to hear what others think, what other people are reading, uh, any recommendations. I'm always open for it. Um, I always say this is a great week for comics. Uh, it's a great time to be reading comics. And, um, you know, so I try to, try to squeeze in my top 10. Usually there's a lot more than that. So um, just try to condense my top 10. But I uh, would love to hear your thoughts. And also big shout out to the, uh, the chat right now, the premiere chat, if you guys are here hanging out on a Thursday. Thursday, uh, 1230 Eastern time. That's when these videos go uh, uh, premiered live. So, so the, the, you know, hanging out with you in the chat is always a great time. And I appreciate you all taking some time to, do, to hang out with me here. Or if you're catching the replay, of course, just appreciate your time in general. Uh, with all that being said, let's jump into the books here. And uh, I'm going to kick it off my top out of my top 10. My number 10 book I'm going to go with is Fight Girls, issue number three. We are halfway through this uh, this mini miniseries. Um, Frank Cho just doing an excellent job. Sabine Rich uh, really enjoying the artwork. I think the artwork's probably what's keeping me hooked uh, a little bit more so than the story. Um, Frank Cho, I'm still, I'm continuing to give this a shot, partially because it's only five issues, so I'm like, you know, what the heck? I've already got two issues in. Um, it is It is a very fast-paced um, type of story that's kind of mixing what I've talked about in the past as um, Hunger Games meets like Jurassic Park in a way. It's like a tournament of these 10 women who are uh, all challenging each other to take the throne of this futuristic world that we're in. And meanwhile, the entire universe watches with all these cameras and there's like cameramen that are like talking about like angle, you know, uh, turn on camera one, zoom in on, on uh, this section here. Like uh, there's like a, uh, a, all the women get like separated and they're all trying to like battle their way and, and, and race their way through these, uh, these obstacles, um, and, and trying to survive all at the same time. So that's why I say it's kind of like Hunger Games. Um, but it's, uh, it's really interesting. And, and now there's like some background behind the scenes stuff that's taking place from the last issue we saw, um, as one of the girls, there's like kind of something special about one of the girls or a, a specific history that we're starting to learn a little bit about. Um, so I am, uh, I am curious where that's going. Um, but o overall, I am I am enjoying Fight Girls. Like I said, the artwork is stunning. Uh, Sabine Rich doing a an incredible job there. So um, I do, at this point, like I said, uh, I'm probably going to finish it out. Uh, this may be more of something that you want to wait on and, and read in, in trade. Um, you know, stay tuned. I'll let you know how, how it is as I continue going on and breaking these issues down uh, until we get to issue five. But uh, in the meantime, that's going to be my number 10 pick of the week. Fight Girls issue number three. Uh, let's see. Going into number nine, I'm going to go with uh, Titans United. So Teen Titans has uh, been something on my radar now where I actually want to go back and read some of the classic stuff um, that came out in the 80s and, um, you know, uh, really explore the the origins of the Titans, Teen Titans. And, um, you know, so I'm 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 new to a lot of it. I started to read some of the Teen Titans series that came out before, kind of fell off that uh, just because there's so many other things that I'm reading right now. Um, but this is by Kevin Scott is the writer here penciling by Jose Luis, uh, Garcia Lopez. That's a long name. Um, is doing the penciling. The artwork looks cool here from what I can tell. Um, not really sure all the details other than the fact that my man Nightwing is in it. So I want to give it a try just to kind of explore that. Um, oh, I see the cover artist here is Jamal Campbell. I like Jamal Campbell. Uh, so good stuff there. Um, and yeah, I just started watching the Teen Titans, um, or, you know, Titans, the TV show, um, uh, on, was HBO Max, I think. 
Um, just started the first couple of, uh, of episodes of that. I know that people are raving about uh, season three right now. So yeah, I'm giving that a shot. Uh, I'm liking it so far. Uh, I'm not fully hooked, but I am enjoying it. Um, I hear that it's kind of hit or miss throughout some of these seasons, but I hear season three is really good. So looking forward to that. Again, this all kind of ties back to my interest in Nightwing, thanks to Tom Taylor. Uh, but that's going to be my number nine pick of the week, Titans United, issue number one. Uh, going into number eight, uh, let's see, I'm actually going to swap these two here. So my number eight pick uh, is an issue, it's, a, it's a, a new series that's coming out. It's by Scout Comics. It is called Night of the Cadillacs. Uh, the artwork looks stunning here, just based on the cover. It's by Rob Pryor doing the artwork. Uh, the writer, and and also noted for the art here, is Kirk Manley. Um, and right off the bat, just kind of reading a little bit about this, it says, In the spirit of Lost Boys and Warriors, Night of the Cadillacs is a high-octane, genre-bending mix of horror, hard action, forbidden love, and street culture. Uh, revival, uh, uh, sorry, rival supernatural gangs come to Earth, on an overnight raiding mission to retrieve life restoring blood from humans while the gang while the gangs battle amongst themselves for prized captives a defiant and charismatic gang gangbanger breaks free from the crew to go on the run for a rebellious 18 year old human girl to protect her from the predator family uh it looks really cool. Uh, it's a Scout comic book. Scout comics has been doing really good stuff lately. I'm going to give it a shot. I figure I throw it on the list. So that is going to be my number eight pick of the week. Uh, Night of the Cadillacs, issue number one. Sounds very interesting. Uh, going into number seven here. Uh, this one, I actually might, I, I probably should have even moved this up a little further. But after reading a little bit more, I'm going to go with Nobody's Child, issue number one for my number, my number seven pick. This is by Behemoth Comics. And just reading the little description here... I mean, it sounds really interesting. Um, I'll start with it being that uh, the writer, uh, Massimo Rossi, who I'm not very familiar with, the artist and, and cover art here, Ramiro uh, Borello, uh, Borello. Let's see. The um, It says, in the unspecified time in the future, it is discovered that within a specific, uh, a special breed of albino rhinosauruses, uh, there is a genetic code that holds the properties to generated uh to generate man that can cure all disease and even those very serious as a result in a short period of time this albino rhino becomes nearly extinct leaving just one rhino named sabian i guess is the name of the rhino uh then it says enter bakari a boy dealing with his own devastation who now decides to dedicate his life to protecting this one rhino um, I think it sounds really interesting. I uh, see him checking out the cover here. Behemoth is another publisher that's been putting out a, re a lot of really good stuff. Um, so, you know, I'm always down for those indie number ones. I'm going to give this a shot for sure. Um, I have this as my number seven pick. It's possible it moves up uh, over the week, but that's, you know, I, I might, this might be one of my top three books that I buy, uh, you know, from my, my three physical books that I buy each week. Um, nobody, Nobody's Child, uh, issue number one. That's going to be my number seven pick of the week. Uh, let's see, going into number six, I'm going to go with I Am Batman, issue number one. I have to say I missed uh, on, on issue zero that came out last month. I'm going to go back and read that. The reason that I'm giving this a shot is that I'm sticking with all of the Fear State event that's coming out by James Tynan. Um, I've decided that that's going to be something I want to give a shot and really, you know, read in all the tie-ins. Um, I just read Fear State issue one last week. I thought it was really good, kind of goes over anything that you may have missed over the past, you know, um, one or two story arcs of Batman uh, from Tynan's run on Batman. And then now going into this, this big event that he's been kicking off. So uh, this is, this is one of the series that ties into that one of the, um, one of the tie-in series. So I'm really excited and I'm going to give this a shot. It's written by uh, John Ridley, the, uh, the artist and cover art here, Oliver Coppell, Coppell, uh, who's, who's great. Who's been great. Um, really enjoying uh his artwork and uh and like i said uh we got a little glimpse of the i am batman series uh thanks to the uh, issue number one fierce i was i think it was called fierce state alpha um which was like a one shot it kind of just covered all you know a recap of a lot of different things while also opening up kind of the future of where this event's going uh it did touch a little bit on i am batman so uh, i'm i'm going to continue with this uh i'm curious what you guys think of fear state so far if you are going to be reading along with this event or if you're just going to stick to the main event or hey maybe you're skipping the whole event altogether either way this is kind of tynan's you know goodbye run to his series uh and, and of course tynan's being you know being one of my favorite writers of this era right now so 
uh, certainly want to uh, give that a shot and see where it goes. So um, that is going to be my number six pick of the week. I am Batman issue number one. Um, so we are halfway through the list and I want to just take a quick moment here to do my community shout out of the week. And my community shout out of the week goes to my man Herminio, aka Big Herm Collectibles. My man Herminio, if you guys do not follow him, he's part of the Bad Batch crew. They do a, a Whiplash Wednesday uh, a series of videos every Wednesday uh, throughout the day. It's a lot of fun. Him and his his, uh, his team, they all have different segments. Uh, some are on Instagram, some are on YouTube. Uh, different shows, different interviews, uh, showing off books, all these different things. And uh, I have to say, Herminio has been such a great um, uh, just member of the community. He, I feel like he is another person who just brings people together um, and, and really is a pillar. I mean, he's he's in every chat. I feel like he supports everybody that's there. Um, and he's just a really nice guy. I mean, you really get to talk to him. I know I had talked to him about scheduling uh, to have him on as my Comic Collector Origins guest uh, coming up here in the next couple months. So we will have that as well. So keep an eye out for that as I get to interview Herminio. But if you have not talked to Herminio, if you've never reached out to him or if you're not following him, I put his information in his description below. And I highly recommend checking out his content. He has a bunch of really cool unboxing videos, um, interviews, hangouts with his friends, hangouts with the community. Uh, he's a very selfless guy. I feel like he really puts the community first in a lot of different ways uh, and I just really appreciate him so Herminio if you are watching this or catching the replay thank you so much brother for everything that you do in this community I can't wait to hang out with you on Comic Collector Origins keep doing what you're doing uh, because you're inspiring a lot of people and uh, and just being yourself man you're just a great guy so uh, again if you guys don't follow Herminio make sure you do all his information is in the description below and shout out to the Bad Batch crew as well uh, so that's my community shout out of the week let's get back into the list here uh, and going into my number five pick of the week I'm going to go with my girl harley quinn uh the eat bang kill tour which has been talked about now for a little while uh really excited for this and one of the things i just realized i was curious about who's writing this did not realize that t franklin is writing this series and i really i really well one t franklin's great i got to meet her over at a, a, a local lcs of mine uh probably when i first got into comics like yeah she was like one of my first artists that I got to meet at like a random shop once. Um, and this shop's like right down from my house. It's not Zap, it's uh, Joker's, Joker Child. Um, and it's uh, she's a writer of Joke Joints, which was a, a image series. She also wrote um, some other things too. Um, man, I can't think of, let me see here. The other title, Bingo Love, was another series that she had put out by Image Comics. Um, I had the opportunity to talk with her for a little while when Joke Joints came out, just get to know her a little bit. Very down to earth, very chill. Um, uh, you know, really just continuing to kick off her writing career. Um, and, and, you know, it's been a couple of years now. I know she does shows or she's been doing shows before the pandemic, things like that. Um, she's someone I'd like to support. Um, I'm really excited to see her on a DC title. It was really exciting, uh, uh, and see where she goes with this. And especially Harley Quinn, if you guys know me, you know that I've been obsessed with that character, uh, recently and just love Harley. So, so shout out to T and, uh, the penciler here, Max, Max Siren, not, familiar with max but definitely looking forward to that uh really like that this is you know part of that animated series vibe uh, i've been kind of really getting into the animated series stuff like the artwork going back and collecting some of the older stuff um something about it i don't know maybe just from my remembering it from my childhood the animated uh the 90s uh series that was out um, either way, this stuff's been great, and uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, like I said, what uh, what comes out of this Harley Quinn series. So that's going to be my number five pick of the week, Harley Quinn, the Eat Bang Kill Tour issue number one. Um, let's see, going into my number four pick, I'm going to go with Campisi, the Dragon Incident, issue number two. I talked very highly of issue one, uh, even before it came out, I remember this was on uh, my top ten list. After reading issue one, I fell in love with it immediately and was actually really surprised that I liked it as much as I did. It is so funny and like witty and the, uh, the, I guess just like the dialogue with the main character, this guy, Sonny, who is like this, like, he's like the right hand man of like the mob and make sure like things get done around town. Uh, you know, people pay their debt and all this other stuff. But the, a lot of the things he like checks in on are really like silly things as well. Uh, like this one guy's like trying to like set up a hot dog stand and he like threatens him. He's like, Hey, this is not your corner. You got to go sell hot dogs somewhere else. And, uh, and it's like the way he like, he takes it so serious. He like bashes their car window in with a bat and all this stuff, like just to threaten them. And it's, it's really funny. So anyways, 
Uh, the dragon incident is basically where uh, this dragon visits the village that he uh, kind of runs. And uh, uh, now it's now it's on him to kind of take care of this dragon or figure, figure out what's going on with this dragon. Because the dragon now has decided to threaten the town. He has his reasons. Uh, it's just really clever, really fun stuff. I do recommend Capici, uh, Campisi, uh, the Dragon Slayer, uh, Dragon Slayer, the Dragon Incident, uh, issue number two, uh, or, or just the series in general. I don't know how many series, how many issues this is going to be, um, but James Patrick's doing the writing, Marco Licati doing the artwork here, um, and let me see, James Patrick. The other series I was going to point out from him that he had done. Um, Kaiju score. That was the other thing. So Kaiju, I mean, amongst other things, I see here he has other Harley Quinn and uh, Batman, some other stuff like that. So, um, but Kaiju score is uh, one of the other ones that uh, I know, I feel like people know his work from. Uh, so just that's uh, James Patrick. And uh, and just uh, to point out, this is an Aftershock book. So love Aftershock, always love what they're doing. Um, and I was not disappointed with issue number one. So, I mean, it's pretty high up on my list. So that should say something. Uh, number four. So definitely give it a shot. If you haven't already, it's not too late to uh, to explore that. Uh, can PC the, uh, the Dragon Incident issue number two. That's my number four pick of the week. Let's get into number three. I'm going to go with the Joker. Uh, this series has been great. It could easily be my number one pick um another tie-in book i mean that's the second one on the list here this week james Tatton just killing it i see uh sam johns is also listed as a writer and sweeney boo i know that there's a punchline series uh in the back pages so i think some of that ties into that for them uh gilliam march uh back here doing the artwork really excited for that um and let's see ben oliver listed as an artist as well i think maybe doing some of the the backstory as well um but this has just been a fantastic series um I mean, straight through. Uh, loving every issue. Really enjoying where this is going. I, I don't even know how this is going to... If, if this is going to continue, where it goes with Tynan ending his whole DC thing. If he's going... You know, who's going to pick it up after? Or what the deal is with this now that Tynan has announced that he's going to be, you know, doing his own thing. Um, either way, though, uh, if you can, check out the trade when it comes out for the first six issues. Or, or first five issues, maybe, is how they'll put it out. Um, but really enjoying this. So uh, that's going to be my number three pick of the week. The Joker issue issue number seven uh down to the top two here and i think that i can say that this is like a 1a 1b but my number two pick is going to be moths issue number four uh if you guys are not reading moths this is a book i seriously recommend i am i'm just loving it um it's from awa upshot it's the fourth issue out of six uh, you know, if you're just getting into it now, if you can't get the issues, maybe it's time to wait for the trade. But uh, it is certainly something worth exploring. You don't even need to know about the world of of what AWA has been doing. Uh, I know they've been putting several issues or several series together that kind of tie into one another. This has moments of that. Um, but I would say you you could seriously just read uh, or, you know, dive into this book even without knowing anything else. Um, the idea of it, and I should say, it's Michael Straczynski doing the the uh, the writing, uh, Mike Choi doing the artwork, and uh, the the overall theme or the the uh, main point of Moths is it's in a world where you there are certain individuals that are born with superpowers. The only thing is they don't know what the superpower is. They can um, they they can decide when they want to. Uh, I forget the phrase that they use, but basically unlock their their potential, their uh, their abilities. The only downside is the minute you unlock your superpowers, you only have six months to live. So that's what really got me hooked is to think about the idea of like, what would you do in that in that situation? If you only had if you knew you had superpowers, you didn't know what they were, uh, but you knew that you had the ability or the opportunity to turn them on. And the minute you do, you only have six months to live. The questions would be, would you even do it? You know? willing to risk having to you're just gonna have a shorter life uh and if you did do it if you did turn on your superpowers what would you do with them uh would you would you try to help your friends and family would you try to save the world would you try to i don't know make more money like all these different things even though it wouldn't matter if you had more money because you'd be dead in six months you know all these different things meanwhile this is a world that takes place where um that's what i'm going to say the resistance uh is, is the, the grand scheme of the world of awa of what they've been putting together um but it, it's in a world where uh, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the planet was taken or is dealing with a um, kind of like a pandemic. Uh, there, there's something going on in the world that people are dying from, um, and the main character here, Emily Kai, she wants to essentially save the world. So um, she's de she's determined on wanting to use her powers. 
uh, to do so. And, uh, you know, you've got to really put thought into it. Uh, even in the beginning of the first uh, issue, I know that there's a nurse that even talks about it and says like, you know, Emily, before you go and do this, you know, before you, you know, unlock your powers, you might want to think about maybe, is it possible that you could help save the world by, ha be, by being on this planet longer than the six months that you have to live, even though you won't have your powers? Or is it going to be more effective for you to have your powers and only have, have it for six months? Something to think about. Uh, but anyways, great series. That's why it's my number two pick of the week uh, for next week and really could be a uh, 1A, 1B type level. Um, it is that good and I'm just really enjoying it. So we're halfway through uh, the Moths series as there is only six issues altogether. So this will be going to the second half here with issue number four. So that's my number two pick of the week. Uh, and before we get to number one, just want to take a moment to say thank you to everyone in the premiere chat for hanging out with me here right now. Or if you're just uh, watching this this replay, I appreciate you taking that time to watch the replay. Please take some time. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts of these top 10 videos that I do for New Comic Book Day each and every week. Uh, like I said, these are books that have not come out yet. These are books that are coming out New Comic Book Day of September 15th, 2021. Uh, let me know if there's books here that you uh, are not or that you don't see that you plan on getting, let me know the, about the books that you're reading. Uh, we'll always love the recommendations. Leave a comment in the uh, comment section below. Um, smash that like button if you haven't. Subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate that as we continue our 1K, uh, uh, road road to 1K, I should say. Um, and again, keep an eye out for the 900 subscriber giveaway. Uh, depending on when you're watching this, uh, this Saturday coming up, I have a Comic Collector Origins. Uh, I'll be talking to my good friend Biggie over at NY Warriors. He's going to be my guest. Really excited for that as well. Uh, that's always Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern time. So if you're around, make sure you check that out. That's live on the channel here. Um, and other than that, let's get into my number one pick. Uh, and that's got to go to, this is actually, I, this may be the first time actually, now that I think about it, of, of all the series I've been doing these top 10 series for, where my number one pick is a brand new series. And uh, that's going to go to Primordial Issue Number 1 as my number one pick of the week. I am so pumped for this. Uh, and if you didn't know or you didn't hear about this, this is a Jeff Lemire, uh, a Je Jeff Lemire and Andre Sorrent uh, Sorrentino team book that I am just obsessed. If you don't know them as creators, they're the ones that did Gideon Falls. I loved Gideon Falls. I am obsessed with anything that Jeff Lemire does. And so, of course, this has got to be high on my list. I am super excited to, to dive into this. Um, and I'll read a little bit about just kind of where this takes place. It is a mind-bending sci-fi that collides with Cold War Thriller in this six-issue miniseries by the bestseller, uh, best-selling and Eisner winner creative team uh, behind Gideon Falls. It's, uh, it takes place in 1957. The USSR launched the dog, Leica, into Earth's orbit. Two years later, the USA responds with two monkeys, Abel and Baker. These, these animals never returned, but uh, unbeknownst to everyone, they did not die in orbit. They were taken uh, and now they are now they are coming home. So that's uh, man, that's that's so awesome. I, I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, this first issue, uh, 32 pages here. Um, and again, I've just heard a lot of hype about this. I mean, obviously Lemire putting out a lot, uh, Sorrentino putting out a lot. I see that there's a ton of variants, uh, including some from like uh, Ken Lashley, who's just been on fire recently. Uh, Dustin Nguyen who Dustin has done um, uh, Descender and Ascender with Jeff Lemire. So I'd like that he's kind of tag teaming on some of the uh, the variants. Christian Ward, who's just been killing it as well. Um, uh, a bunch, a bunch, uh, I can see here. So really excited. And again, that's going to be my number one pick of the week. Primordial issue number one. Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to be buying this book when it comes out. I am certainly going to be getting at least cover A and uh, and maybe a, maybe a variant. Uh, we'll see as I try to keep it to my you know my three books of the week. So, um, but anyways, uh, if you guys ever want to talk comics, reach out to me over on Instagram. I'm always down to talk comics and uh, hope you guys get whatever it is that you're looking for for New Comic Book Day. Make sure you smash that like button on the way out. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for all, uh, for watching and anybody in the chat right now. Appreciate all of you. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.